This is a design optimization tutorial, specifically how to design a simple tubular symmetric truss as shown down here. Now there's a couple variables that we're going to be concerned about, namely the height, the diameter of the tube, the thickness of the tube, the separation distance, and then we have some other variables such as depend, dependent on the material that we select, such as the density and the modulus of elasticity. Okay, so we have uh, all of these variables and we want to stay within uh, constraints like it won't yield, it will not buckle, and does not deflect excessively. And with all of those, we want to minimize the weight. So we have different design variables that we can adjust. And in this case, we'll just adjust two of them. Here are some equations that relate those variables that we mentioned to the weight. We have the stress and then also the buckling stress as well. So these are the equations that help us define our constraints. We have one more as well. We have the deflection. So those are all defined in terms of the variables that are given or some of the variables that we're going to use to optimize this system. Things that we can change. We first of all talk about analysis variables. All of those that we just uh, mentioned and we have analysis functions as well. Things that help us define our constraints. So here's a list of analysis variables. We have the height, the diameter, the thickness, the separation distance, modulus of elasticity, density, and load with specific values that are given either as starting guesses or as values that we really can't change. Okay, and then the analysis functions as well. Given these variables and those equations up above, we have this value for the weight, stress, buckling, stress, and deflection. So we can obtain a new design by changing one or all of these analysis variables. And for example, if we change the thickness from 0.15 to 0.10, we find that the weight has decreased, but the stress and deflection have increased as shown below. So we just changed one value, the thickness, and we had the weight decreased, but uh, some of these increased. Okay, so for optimization, what we want to do is we want to, in this case, we're going to adjust the height and the diameter to minimize the weight and we want to keep the stress less than 100, the stress minus the buckling stress less than 0, and the deflection less than 0.25. Okay, so let's uh, so set this up and solve this with an optimization package in Python. And I'll show you a link to this as well if you want to look at some of the source code. We're going to use the Gecko package for optimization in Python. But if you'd like to go to the problem, come to apmeyer.com slash ME575. This is optimization techniques and engineering. It's a design engineering course. And one of the introductory assignments is here on the right, the two bar truss problem. So you'll see a description of the problem. And tutorials in all of these different optimization platforms with step-by-step -step instructions. So for example, if you want to select uh, fmincon in MATLAB, it will show you how to set that up and solve it with fmincon as well. Okay, there's APM Python and MATLAB. If you want to get this solution that we're going to go over here, here is the Python Gecko solution. Now, if you're going to use this, I'd recommend coming down here to the Git code and selecting that because it'll give you the raw source code that you can run a little bit more easily. 
So I'm going to start uh, having this type this out. And what we'll do is, first of all, we need to get Gecko. Okay, and we'll, we can pip install that. Let me go ahead and save this as well. And so I'll call this uh, truss.py. So you can do pip install gecko, or you can run it from this script. I'll show how to run it uh, here from the command prompt as well. Or you can do it through this script and go try from gecko import gecko, capital gecko. And if it, if it has an error, if it isn't installed, then you can import pip. And then do pip.main install gecko. And so you can do that right from the script. And then from gecko import gecko. Or you can do pip install gecko from the command line. Okay, so you can do it either way. Okay, now we're going to create a new model. And as we go through this, I'll just detail the equations that are listed here on the right. We're going to do, first of all, the width is going to be one of our parameters. Okay, we have the thickness. That's also going to be a parameter as well. Let's just go down to the list of values here. Okay, the width is the B. The thickness is the T. The density is listed there as well, 0.3. The modulus of elasticity is 30,000. The load is 66. Okay, so that's 66 um, in thousands of pounds. Okay, we're going to declare some variables. Here is the height. This is something that we can adjust. And then we also have the diameter as well. We're going to make that a variable. And those are initial guess values. And then we're putting lower and upper bounds on those. The weight as well, that's going to be a variable. We're going to calculate that later. We're going to include some intermediate variables. Okay, intermediate variables have explicit equations that help us not have to solve those implicitly. Okay, but we can write an expression for them above and then down below just substitute them into our optimization problem. So we're calculating some of these intermediate quantities that need to be updated as we update our diameter, height, or uh, calculate a new weight as well. Okay, so here are the, the length area. So let me go back up here. Okay, so we have area. I have a I over A, which is just another one that we use in multiple locations. We also have the stress. And then the buckling as well. So I've condensed a couple of these down into um, some shorter equations and then substitute them in successively. Okay, here's the buckling. Okay, and then we have the deflection as well. Just come down to this one. Okay, so we have equations for each of these. We're calculating them as a function of our parameters or variables or prior intermediates that we already defined. And then once we're done with this, we'll set up our objective and any inequality constraints that we need to meet as well. Here is our implicit equation section. Okay, we're going to do m dot equation. Use the double equal sign there. And this one, we needed that for weight because weight is one of our variables that we need to say is less than, uh, less than 24. The stress has to be less than 100. And then the stress minus buckling, okay, has to be less than zero. I just put those on separate sides of the equation. So you can put equality or inequality constraints in there. And then also the deflection has to be less than 0.25.
we want to minimize the weight so we're going to create our objective which is always minimizes that quantity that you put inside those parentheses and then we'll solve the optimization problem so if you set remote equals false you can have a local solve that's currently available only for Windows we're working on the Linux one as well okay so now we're gonna print some results here of the optimization problem and so it's just well, after we've solved it we'll go ahead and print it okay this is going to be the height and the diameter and the thickness so we want to be able to see uh, what this is calculating okay so while this uh, finishes let me just go ahead and run another version of this and then we'll see our solution here and we're also going to create a contour plot as well we'll see this run it'll solve it and there's the height and the diameter and the weight and then it generated some contour plots so we'll go over those in just a second let's just look at what the solver told us okay we had seven variables five equations we had some slack variables those are from the inequality constraints it automatically sets those up for us and it's using exact Hessian and exact first derivatives as well from automatic differentiation this is running IPOPT version 3.12.8 and there you can see the number of iterations that it took it took 12 iterations you can see the objective function go down and it converges okay it says optimal solution was found and the value of the objective function was 15.86 okay so let's uh, let's just look at the uh, weight that was our thing that we were trying to minimize 15.868 and the height was 14.2 and the diameter was 1.69 now the next thing that we're doing is we also want to be able to uh, analyze our results with a contour plot and so I'll show you the code for that in just a minute but I, what I want to do is maybe just come over here and uh, look at some of these contour plots that were generated now these are the different constraints that we have right here we had three inequality constraints okay so those map to um, let's just go look at our code for this okay so we had a couple of the constraints down here we had that the deflection has to be less than 0.25 so there you can see that is the blue one this would be the deflection constraint and as we change the diameter or the height this is the limit right here of you know if we have uh, less diameter or less height then the deflection constraint is going to be violated if it goes over onto this side of the line so there's our deflection constraint we also have the stress has to be less than 100 as well and so as we increase the height or increase the diameter we're going to reduce the stress and so this one is our stress right here we have to be on the upper side of that one as well now we also want to visualize um, the final constraint okay which is the, the uh, stress okay let's see our final one is a stress has to be less than the buckling uh, so this one would be this one this one right here stress less than buckling okay so there's our final one and then also the weight um, we have to have a weight is less than 24 as well okay so uh, we also have right here we have our objective function values our weight okay 
And as we put different quantities of height and diameter, we're going to get an improvement in the, um, you know, in the in the weight. So if I look at, you know, I want to go downhill to the minimum value, my optimizer would go dip right down here or even further if it weren't for these constraints. So what we want to do is look at the constraints. Now we have to be on this side of all of those constraints. So the only point or region that satisfies these is going to be right here that I'm shading in. Any combination of height and diameter is going to meet the engineering designs for all of those constraints. But we don't want to just pick any feasible solution. We want to pick the optimal one. And so if we look at the objective values, we can see that we're going to get the best value right here at this optimal solution. And that was the height of 14. And uh, the diameter, let's go back to that and just look at it. Okay, diameter about 1.7. Okay, and the height of 14.2. So let's just go to 1.7 on the diameter. And then about 14.2. So those were the two optimal values that the optimizer found. It started from somewhere away from that point and then used mathematical programming and we call that nonlinear programming solvers with an interior point method in order to be able to find the solution. Now this other contour plot that's generated, sometimes I like to put um, you know the little uh, you know uh, line there with less width just to show what what's the feasible side of that inequality constraint. And also as I change it, as I um, you know, change the constraint just a little bit. I can see you know how close I am to that constraint. Okay, so this concludes the tutorial. This is a design optimization problem, and we're using Gecko in order to be able to solve this. I'll just show you the rest of the source code here to be able to generate the contour plot. So in this case, we just used matplotlib numpy uh, to generate this and had to do a mesh grid uh, that you can see right down here, created a mesh grid of different heights and diameters. Uh, we evaluated those constraints at all the different heights and diameters and then just plotted the contour plot with the different, um, you know, with the different contours uh, that we selected in order to represent our constraints. Okay, so I hope you enjoy this. Enjoyed this. Uh, you know, again, there are many other tutorials there on the web page uh, in order to be able to solve this problem with a variety of different optimizers.